my hope is in the Lord from this day on and forevermore. Oh, my hope is in. Stay on and forevermore. Oh, my hope is in the Lord forevermore. And the blood that Jesus shed for me. several requests written in tonight. Uh, please pray for Brother David and Sister Emily Williams. That's an old friend of mine from Hot Springs there. and lived in, moved, moved to Pennsylvania, but uh, they lost their little baby today. It was a little girl. I, they just found out she was a little girl a couple weeks ago, and then they lost her today, so I want to remember them in prayer. Also, Sister Pat, uh, she showed me a picture there for Uncle, and uh, you know, she said, I, I wish the Lord would take him home or heal him, and uh, it looked just just look pitiful. You know, you don't want to see anybody suffer like that. So I want to pray that the Lord's will be done in that situation. Amen for Brother Harold. And, uh, and so uh, he has.
has a CAT scan on his lungs Monday at 7.40. Or Pat, Grimes, Sister Pat, do you have the CAT scan or is that for, you do. Sister Pat has a CAT scan uh, on Monday at 7.45. So remember her in prayer and also Her- Harold Bivens as well. Just, just that the Lord would do a special work in his life. And uh, Sister Stephanie has a co-worker blood cancer and another has colon cancer and the co-worker uh, and the co-worker's mother has dementia please pray for all three of them for healing we know God can and remember them in prayer uh, I heard that with Jared and sister Emily I heard that they're much better he was the last one with the symptoms so uh, they said they'd see us Wednesday but they were just they will really attack him this week with the flu and strep all at the same time so the devil is on the job isn't he Brother David, would you come and take these needs to the Lord tonight? And if you have a special need, just put your hand up to the Lord if you would, and and he sees every one of them. Heavenly Father, Lord, we come before you tonight, Lord. We just want to give you praise. Thank you for your love, your grace, and mercy in our lives, Lord. We just want to be be sure to worship you, Lord, and approach you in worship and spirit and in truth, Lord. These requests that lay on the table before you, Lord, you know each and every one. Pray you just move on each behalf in your perfect will, Lord. Let everything be done according to that. Just ask you to bless our service tonight, Lord. Bless Brother Stewart as he speaks. Just bless the communion service, Lord. Let healing go forth as we partake of it, Lord, in, in our bodies and spirit, Lord. Just ask you to move. Bless the service this evening. Help us to worship you. In Jesus' name. Oh, would you be free from your burden of sin? There's power in the blood. There's power in the blood. Would you or evil a victory win? There's wonderful power in the blood. Well, there is power, power, wonder-working power in the blood. There's power in the blood, power in the blood. Won't you come for a cleansing to Calvary's time? There's wonderful power in the blood. Well, there is power, power, wonder-working power in the blood. There's power in the blood, power in the blood. Oh, sin stains are lost in its life-giving flow. There's wonderful power in the blood. Well, there is power, power, wonder-working power in the blood. us your king. There's power in the blood, power in the blood. Oh, would you live daily his praises to sing. There's wonderful power in the blood. Well, there is power, power, wonder-working power in the blood.
Sister Esther, Sister Emma, Sister Noli are going to sing. As they come, let's sing that one more time. Well, there is power, power, wonder-working power in the blood of the Lamb. Oh, there is power, power, wonder-working power in the precious blood of the singing sister ella and sister melody you have a song together is that what it is okay all right y'all just come as soon as they're done okay
Are you enjoy that tonight? Oh, yeah. yeah. Go ahead. You can get, give our singers another hand. I love you for you are mine. I love you for you are mine. I don't remember. G, I think. I love, well, I love you for you are mine. Oh.
the blood could conquer death and win the victory. No other blood but the blood my Jesus shed for me. For his blood was not just blood of another spotless land, but his expecting the word of the Lord tonight to bless your hearts and change your life. Amen. As he comes, let's sing. Oh, how he loves you and me. service here tonight lord this this change hearts and lives we pray lord and lord may we be different when we leave this place lord we lord we thank you so much lord and lord for showing us your word showing us lord your your spirit oh god coming into us lord and lord we just ask that you would have your way tonight lord bless your people we pray bless your word now lord as it would go forth we pray in jesus name tonight. Amen. Let's turn the scriptures to Ezekiel 36 and 23. 
mindful we're in a communion service tonight, but we want we want the Lord to have His way, man. Man, but Ben wanted to me to speak to the youth, and I I think I've been more more nervous about this than anything, and not that I'm nervous right now, but it's serious serious dealing with the youth. Amen. Ezekiel 36 and 23. And I will sanctify my great name, which was profaned among the heathen, which ye have profaned in the midst of them. And the heathen shall know that I am the Lord, saith the Lord God, yes. when I shall be sanctified in you before their eyes. And when I will take you from among the heathen and gather you out of all countries and will bring you into your own land. Then will I sprinkle clean water upon you, and you shall be clean. From all your filthiness and from all your idols will I cleanse you. A new heart also will I give you, and a new spirit will I put within you. And I will take away the stony heart out of your flesh, and will give you a heart of flesh. And I will put my spirit within you, and cause you to walk in my statutes, and ye shall keep my judgments and do them. And ye shall dwell in the land that I gave to your fathers. And ye shall be my people, and I will be your God. Well, Amen. You can just be seated here this evening. Amen. Just title this tonight, A Holy Ghost Change. Amen. We want the word to have an effect on us. Amen. Amen. We all had our own experience and and God gives you your own experience amen but our experience must match the word right yeah. amen we're not just looking uh, for a, an emotion or a sensation amen but we want to be changed amen and that's what the Holy Ghost does that's when when God comes into you if you really have an experience with him it'll bring a change amen that's just what we want to kind of look at tonight he said I will sanctify my great name. Oh, yeah. Amen. We, we believe in sanctification tonight, don't we? We believe in being clean. Amen. Oh, yeah. Amen. It's part of our, a part of, of, of being saved. We're saved. We're, we're sanctified and, and we're filled with the Holy Ghost. That's the process, right? And so, amen. To be saved, believe on the Lord. Amen. Confess your sins. Surrender to Him. Amen. And, and you'll be saved. Amen. And then God begins to, to clean up your life. He begins to take things out of you that aren't supposed to be there, right? And so uh, the younger you are, and that's who we're preaching to tonight, the young folks, the younger you are, the easier that process will be. And the longer you go, as you get older and older, the harder that process will be. You will be as time goes on and you get older, you will become hardened by sin. And so we want to try to catch you at a young age, amen. We want to encourage you, amen, to, to serve the Lord now, to, to give your heart to Him now, amen. But that word sanctify, amen, means to consecrate, prepare, to dedicate, amen, to be hallowed, to be sanctified, to be separate, to be set apart, amen. And God said, I will sanctify them. Amen. And to be sanctified means to be set aside for service. Amen. To be set aside, amen, waiting to be filled with the Holy Ghost. Amen. We can't skip this process. And Brother Ben, he wanted me to preach on the Holy Ghost, and, and, but you, you can't skip that process. We've got to be sanctified. We've we got to be clean. Amen. No matter how young or how old we are, the Holy Ghost will not come into a vessel that's dirty. Amen. He has to come in and sanctify that vessel. He said, I will sanctify my people. So we're sanctified. Amen. We're made clean by God's sanctifying power. He's the one that does it. Amen. We're washed by the water of the word. Amen. Brother Branham said it's a bleeding word. The word bled for you. Amen. Amen. It's Jesus Christ. Amen. It's the in word form and that word. Amen. Bled on Calvary. Amen. The word in flesh came and, and lived and breathed and, and overcame and died for you and I. And the word that we read. Amen. It's the bleeding word. The word that we believe. It'll wash you. It'll make you clean. Amen. It'll set you apart. It'll make you different from the world. 
Amen. So we're washed, amen. We're sanctified by the word and by the truth. Aren't you thankful for the truth? Amen. A word, amen. A message that lets you know when you're doing wrong. Right? Amen. It's not going to let you get by with it because, because we're trying to produce something. We're trying to produce not just a, not just a, 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 a church people, but a God people. Sons and daughters of God. Amen. That's what the word is trying to produce. Amen. Messiahs. The word in this hour is trying to produce Messiahs. The anointing of this hour, amen, is trying to bring you to something for a purpose. And Brother Brown says here in Hebrews uh, chapter 7, he said, O God, grant it to them this hour while they wait, waiting for the blessings of God to come upon them. Take all the temper, all the world away from them and create in them a new heart. Amen. There's got to be a change take place. The old you has to die. Amen. And there's got to be something new that, amen, by the Holy Ghost that something takes place, a change, and you're made new. Amen. 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 Creating them a new heart. He said, I'll take the old heart away and put a heart of flesh. I'll put my spirit in there. I'll put my spirit in there and they shall walk in my statutes and keep my commandments because, amen, it's an ordinance of love, not of duty. It's of love and love constrains us by a spirit. Right. Amen. Lord. By a spirit, love constrains us. It's, it's a duty of love to constrain us. Lord. Amen. Amen. When you get that love of God in your heart. Amen. Young people, when you get that love of, go- of God in your heart, it constrains you to do what the word says to do. Yeah. Mom and daddy, amen, as you get older, amen, you're going you're gonna to develop a mind of your own and, a, and more of a will of your own. Amen. But if you'll get the Holy Ghost in you, amen, oh. amen, amen, we won't, have to, we won't have to beat you over the head with it. Come and I, I don't want to beat nobody's kids over the head with nothing. My kids are nothing. I want them to get something in them that I ain't got to beat them over the head. Amen. We're going to tell you about it. We're going to let you know. But I'll let you know that this evening that there's a Spirit of God. There's a Holy Ghost. They, amen. It doesn't matter how young, how old you are this evening. It'll come in and change you. And it'll give you something in you that you can obey the Word. Amen. You'll love the Word. Amen. Amen. It'll take the world out. It'll take the order of this world out. It'll take the love of this world out of your heart. Right? Amen. 1 John 2.15 Love not the world, neither the things that are in the world. If any man love the world, the love of the Father is not in him. Amen. The love of the Father, the Holy Ghost. Amen. We're going to be simple here tonight. Follow along with me. The love of God is shed abroad in our hearts by the Holy Ghost. We love His Word. We love to be in His presence. And that's what God wants to impart to you. Amen. Amen. And the world wants to take it out of you. Right? The world don't like it. The world hates it. John 15, 18, Jesus said, If the world hates you, ye know that it hated me before it hated you. If you were of the world... Amen. The world would love his own, but because you're not of this world, because, but I have chosen you out of the world. Therefore, the world hateth you. I remember when I first started serving the Lord. The people that I got along with before, I no longer got along with. There was a hate there because I had changed. I wasn't like I, wasn't like I was. Amen. And the world hates to see somebody that takes a stand for God. And I, and I tried to figure that out, and it, it was so hard. And you'll, you'll figure it out, amen, you older young people, and maybe not so much just the young ones yet, but, amen, when you really try to take a stand for God, the enemy will come in, and those around you, he will anoint them to hate you. Yeah. Amen. Because they hated our Lord, they're going to hate you. Amen. But I, I would rather the world hate me. Amen. And, and, and me stand for God. Amen. Amen. That, that I could stand for him in this hour. Yeah. That, I could, that I wouldn't be ashamed. Amen. To testify of what he's done for me. 
And the world is going to try to suppress you. Amen. Because it hates. It hates to see anything that pertains to God. Amen. Amen. And that's why, amen, it's got to be more than you. But it takes a spirit of God in you. It takes something, amen, to take out the scared, amen, that you're not afraid to tell somebody about Jesus. All right. Amen, to stand for the word of the hour. Amen, Amen. the world's going to hate you for it. Amen, but I want the love of the Father. I want want the love of the word in my life. I I want a love for the word. And when when I first started serving God, there was something in me that hungered to to read the Bible. Something that, that hungered in me to get in His presence in prayer. Amen, I longed to be in it. Amen, I, when I first started serving the Lord, I didn't know how to pray. I didn't know how to get in His presence, but I wanted to be in His presence. Oh, yeah. Amen, but if you'll lay before Him long enough, amen, you'll, you'll enter into that presence. Right. And there is a strength, amen, and when you mix that with the Word, that's where you as a young person, amen, the world is shut out, and you're in that secret place with God, amen, and that's where we're trying to get you tonight, not just an ideology, amen, but to get you in that secret place where you can draw strength, amen. There was something in me that that I knew that I had to feed upon the message of the hour. As a young man, I, I knew God had done something for me. I knew He had saved me sanctified me and and that was a process because I I had become hardened because of sin but I'll tell you this if you're hardened here this evening and these young ones shouldn't be that way but the older ones I'm I'm not going to pick on nobody but me myself I was so hardened but I knew I could see God moving in my life and he would send, send little ex, uh, experiences right. of God tenderizing my heart, yeah. of softening my life. Oh my. And you, you think it's insignificant, but I was so hardened. The presence of yeah. God just wasn't dealing with me like it, it had when I was younger. Yeah. And I remember going to church one day, and my cousin's little daughter, come she come out, and I was so hardened. So hardened. She come up, and she gave me a hug. And that, that experience, that tenderized my heart. It tenderized my heart. God used that little girl, and I believe that with all my heart, to kind of begin that. I remember, amen, living in sin. And I was so, amen, I was so burdened. I wanted to serve God, but I was so hardened. And I, me and my cousin had, had got into a disagreement, and I drove out and, and asked him to forgive me. I was nowhere from being a Christian. But I could see God was moving. Amen. God was wanting to bring, take out that that stony heart and put in a new spirit. He was trying to tenderize me, amen, that he could bring in his spirit. Amen. And if you're hardened, amen, amen, he can't come while you're hardened. He has to soften that. I remember my mom, I, I came home and that was one of the nights that I hadn't really been up to no good. That was one of the few nights that I'd come in and I sat down and and she began to read out of me out of the book of Ephesians. And I remember there just weeping from those words. And I've told you all this before, but there God tenderizing me. Taking out that stony, that stony flesh that he could deal with me. Amen. God will give you those experiences. Amen. But the point of it is, let's not get to that point. Let's not, let's not get to that spot where you're so hardened. Amen. Your hearts are tender now. I can see my children, how they, they said, I, I, I love Jesus. I love to go to church. Amen. And that just does so much for me. Their hearts oh, are so yeah. tender now. Amen. But I'll tell you, the world wants to take that out of you. Amen. But let's, let's as, a, as a church here, let's, let's get behind our young people. Let's preserve that tenderness. Amen. Amen. Let's keep them in a presence. In church services. Amen, we're, we're not dampering the Spirit of God, but we're elevating the Spirit of God. Yes, sir. Amen. Yes, sir. That's good. Amen. Thank you, Lord. The world's going to hate you, but God has chosen you to be different. Yes. And so that new Spirit, it begins to clean, clean us and sanctify us. Amen. And His Holy Spirit, when He comes in, Amen. Not just a new spirit where you're, where you're made clean. We don't want to stop there, yeah. but we want to go on to His Spirit. Yeah. 
Amen. And that spirit gives you the power to keep the word. It gives you the power to overcome. It's the greater. It's what you can't do. He comes in and does it. Amen. You can try. You can try. You can want to serve God. But until you get his spirit in you, you'll never be able to do it. You'll never be able to lay those old habits down until he comes in. Amen. Amen. It's his spirit in you that you're able to keep the word. Amen. It's no longer a bunch of do's and don'ts. It's no longer because mama or daddy told me to do it. It's because the spirit of God, I've had an experience with God. Amen. And and there's something in in me constraining me to do it. Amen. It's the love of God. It's the love for the word. Amen. I'll say tonight, none of us can live good enough. None of us can live a holy life. None of us were good enough when he came. Amen. But the Lord said, I will sanctify them. Amen. The heathen and the unbeliever, the world shall know that I am the Lord. Amen. I will be sanctified before their eyes. God will do a work. Amen. Among your associates. And they'll know there's a difference. Amen. You won't have to go around. Amen. Puffing out your chest. Amen. But they'll know there's something different. There's something different about this person. Amen. They've changed. Amen. 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 I will I will sanctify, be sanctified in you before their eyes. I will take you from the world, amen, and bring you to your own land. Oh, yeah. I will wash you by the water of the Lord. I will cleanse you. I will change you. I will put my spirit in you. Oh, thank you Lord. Amen. That's what the word is telling you tonight. Amen. And God wants to pour his spirit out among us. Oh, yeah. In the last days, he'll pour out his spirit. Amen. Are we not in the last days? Amen. That's a promise that we can claim. Amen. That the Spirit of God can pour itself out in this place. Amen. He told them, Amen, you will dwell in the land of your fathers. And so, by the ministry of Elijah, our hearts have been turned back to the faith of our fathers. To our Pentecostal fathers, right? We have been restored back to what they believed, as we heard this morning, the same word, the same fullness, the same power of God that can change somebody's life, amen, amen, a a perfect word with a perfect faith, and that's what it takes, amen, you yourself have got to have faith in what's being said, in what you hear, amen, and and as the sheep of God, amen, you will hear the voice of God, amen, and I I can't try to, we can't try to force it on you, amen, but there's a predestinated time. There's a predestinated moment, amen, and there's no devil in hell that can hold you back from receiving it, amen, amen. No man can come to the Father but by me, so it takes Jesus, it takes his voice, and when you recognize that voice is calling you, amen, there's nothing that can hold you back. Come on. Amen. Amen. We want our young people to have what they had on the day of Pentecost, don't yeah. we? Yes, right. Amen. Yes. Come on. Amen. We want that type of change to take yeah. place. And we're all going to have different experiences. Amen. But, amen, if you match your experience by the word, amen, that same change will take place. We'll, we'll have different experiences. Amen. As brother, I think Brother Wayne said, you know, some people think that you got to be baptized and then you receive the Holy Ghost. But in, in the book of Acts, there was those that received the Holy Ghost and then they were baptized. Yeah, Amen. Right. Amen. We've got to get out of order sometimes. Amen. In our minds, we've got to get out of order, brother. And so we got to, the church needs to get out of order long enough that they can get saved, yeah, that they can right. get filled with the Holy Ghost. Amen. Oh. Amen. Don't try to denominate this message. Don't try to put, amen, a period on what you believe, amen, and think you've got it figured out. Amen. God is sovereign. His grace is sovereign. God can move, amen, amen, beyond what we think, but he'll stay with his word. Amen. Amen. It's not just our own little ideas, but amen. He's sovereign. He moves. His grace is sovereign. Amen. God can set a blaze here tonight by his sovereignty. Amen. I, I remember when I when I first got saved and, and God was dealing with my life in our church. There was there was a, a time where, Amen. There was a lot coming to the Lord. It wasn't just me, Amen. But there was a sovereign move of God. Yeah. Amen. No man can produce that. 
You can't work it up. You can't work it down. But it's the sovereignty of God, amen, that will bring in a generation their chance at the word. Amen. Amen. And we'll get to something along those lines here in just a little bit. Lord, help my voice. Amen. You love the Lord tonight. I better hurry up. Matthew 3.11. Amen. I want to ask these kids a question. See who knows. Why are you scared? <laughs> a minister asked this question at our church years ago, and, and I think everybody got the question wrong. We're going to see what these kids know. Who, who's your favorite Bible character? Samson, that's a good one. Who's yours? That's a good one. Who's yours? I'm going to get that boy to talk to me one day. Maybe not tonight. I love you, buddy. I see, yeah. Yep. I seen him. That's where it was, his Bible was open to last week. I seen that. Amen. Who did Jesus say was the greatest prophet that had ever, ever lived? Don't you answer it. Any of y'all know? The greatest prophet. Yes, ma'am. John the Baptist. Amen. John the Baptist, Jesus said, was the greatest prophet that had ever come. But John didn't do a, a, a bunch of miracles. Amen. But what John done, he introduced the Messiah. Amen. He introduced to that generation, amen, Jesus Christ. He identified the Word. He identified the Lamb of God. Amen. And I think that's, that's the greatest thing we can do as ministers. Amen. Amen. Bring the people to Jesus Christ. Right? Amen. Bring, bring the young people to Jesus Christ. Not just get them to a church idea. Amen. But get them to someone that can change their lives. Amen. Introduce them to someone that can change their lives. Amen. Matthew 3.11. Good job, Millie. Matthew 3.11. John said here, John the Baptist, I indeed baptize you with water unto repentance. But he that cometh after me is mightier than I, yeah. whose shoes I'm not worthy to bear. He shall baptize you with the Holy Ghost and with fire, oh, yeah. whose fan is in his hand, and he will thoroughly purge his floor and gather his wheat into the garner. Amen. But he will burn up the chaff with unquenchable fire amen amen he testified of one greater than himself amen there there john the baptist turning the people back to the faith just as as brother Branham was commissioned to turn our hearts back to the faith he was pointing them amen he was telling them there was a change coming there was someone amen mightier than i amen i'm going to identify him and how i will identify him amen the the holy ghost the holy spirit the dove will identify upon the lamb of god and, and when he seen it he said amen here is the lamb of god that takes away the sin of the world amen amen he will baptize you with the holy ghost and fire Amen. And we can, we can, as ministers, we can, we can take you and we can baptize you. And that's what we're commissioned to do. Amen. But there's one, amen, that can baptize you with the Holy Ghost and power. Amen. He will burn the desire of sin. Amen. Amen. You won't have to beat yourself over the head. Amen. Over sin and things that are wrong. Amen. He'll come in and he'll burn that out of you with the Holy Ghost. Amen. And he's the same yesterday, today, and forever. If he ever was a baptizer, he's here now. Amen, we're coming down to the end, the end of the age, amen. And there's seed, there's elect, there's sons and daughters of God that's got to receive that power. Oh yeah. Amen. Amen, the baptizer. Amen. Brother Ram says he prophesied that there would come a witness for the church, the Holy Ghost. I indeed baptize you with water, that's my mission I'll baptize you under repentance, but there's one coming after me. I'll bear witness with water, but there's one coming, amen, to send something greater. Amen. He will send another witness, amen, the Spirit of God. He'll take the church membership away from you and give you a true witness. He'll baptize you with the Holy Ghost and fire. 
Amen. That's what we want. We want young people on fire for God. Amen. We don't want to throw a wet blanket on, on, on a service, amen, and amen, and water down the word, amen, but we want the fire to fall. Amen. I want to be consumed. I want to see young people consumed by the fire. Amen. Talking to John the Baptist. Amen. And in John 1, he was not that light, but was just sent, bear, sent to bear witness of that light. Oh, that's right. That was the true light that lighteth every man that cometh into the world. He was in the world, and the world was made by him, and the world knew him not. He came unto his own, and his own received him not. Speaking of Jesus, but as many as received him, to them gave he power to become the sons of God. Thank to them that believe on his name, which were born, not of blood, not of the will of the flesh, nor of the will of man, but of God. Yep. Amen. It's a Holy Ghost birth. Oh, amen. Yes, Can somebody say amen? amen? It's a birth. Amen. And if you'll receive him, amen, in the, in the light in which God, amen, will allow you as a, as a young person, amen, if you'll receive him, amen, he'll give you power. Amen. He'll give you an identification. And I remember, you know, just, just being down as a young man and just, just first starting to serve the Lord. And you know how, amen, when you're starting out, the devil's on you. He's on your tail. And one of the things that he'll use is doubt. He'll try to make you question, amen, your experience with God. He'll try to make you question, amen, that even if there is a God. And you go back to the scripture, you go back to when Jesus, when he had to receive the Holy Ghost, amen, and he was led away in the wilderness to be tempted. Yeah. And one of the tactics that Satan used upon him, amen, he would come and he would ask him, if thou be the Son of God, amen, turn these stones to bread. Amen, there he said, if thou be. So he was trying to get him to question, he was trying to get him to doubt, amen, even if you're, if you're the Son of God, do this. He was trying to get him to doubt. He was trying to get him off the word. Amen. And if you got the Holy Ghost, that's a good sign. Amen. That Satan, when he comes at you with a doubt, amen, that, that you're even a son of God. Amen. Amen. Because as a son of God, that's your authority. That's your identification. Yes, when you can realize that, amen. And when the devil's under your feet, amen. Amen. Jesus never moved. He never wavered. He never used his own power. Amen. But he knew who he was. Amen. The Holy Ghost, amen. When you receive him, it gives you an identification that I'm a son of God, that I'm a daughter of God. And Brother Branham said, Amen. When I was born again, I realized I was no longer the son of Charles and Ella Branham, right. Branham but I was, amen, a son of Jesus Christ. Yes. Yes. Amen. There's power and identification. Oh, yes. I'm giving you all I got tonight. Come on. Good. Amen. But as many as received him, gave he the power to become the offsprings of God. I give unto them eternal life. Oh, yes. Eternal life, he said, comes from the Greek word zoe. And Zoe is that life. It's the life of God. And if the life of God living in you produce, produces a God, it'll produce a godly life just as certain as I'm standing in this platform. And the man that's got it can no more perish than God can perish because God is in that man. Yes, sir. Amen. Amen. God is in that man. Glory. Amen. Yes. It'll produce a godly life. You believe that? Oh, yes. Brother Ben gave me an hour tonight. Y'all don't shut down on me now. Come on. We got a little ways to go. Come on. Amen. Harvest time, he says, No man can come to me, said Jesus, except my Father draws him. All the Father hath given me, past tense, given to me, will come to the Word. And how can they come unless they were all foreordained to come? As many as received him to them gave he power to become the sons of God because their names were written on the book. He come to redeem what was on that book. So I can't put your name on there and I can't take it off. Amen. But, amen. But if your name was written on that book, amen, before the foundation of the world, you've got to come. There's nothing that can stop it. Amen. You will receive life. Amen. Oh, Amen. The Lord. devil may, may deter you some way. Amen. And, and I say, let's serve God now. Let's not wait till we're, oh, yeah. we're 20, 30, 40, 50 years to try to deal with something. Amen. Let's serve him now. Amen. Let's give him our best, our best years. Come on. Amen. Amen. Good. Amen. So there, 
there was one that came. And when Jesus, when he came, amen, they, 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 the disciples thought, you know, he's, we're going to rise up an army here. We're going to rise up an army. We're going we're gonna to overthrow Rome. Amen. But that's not the purpose that he came. Amen. He wanted to come set up a throne in a kingdom of God in his sons and his daughters. And that kingdom of God is the Holy Ghost in you. Amen. And when, when Jesus came and he lived and he, and he died, amen, that blood cell that was shed on Calvary, it released that life, amen, that overcoming life, the, the Holy Ghost, it released it back to you and I. Yes. Amen. Do you believe that tonight? Yes. Amen. We still need Calvary. Yes, We've got to come to Calvary and die out. Amen. Jesus died that we might have eternal life. Amen. And you've got to come and die to yourself before you can receive eternal life. Amen. We can't skip that process. Amen. And we all, we, we want the power. We, we want the gifts and we want this and that. But nobody's willing to die to themselves anymore. Yes, sir. Amen. This sister, she used to sing in, in the Brother Ivy's years ago. Amen. She couldn't carry a tune in a bucket. My goodness. Woman couldn't sing for nothing. But she used to sing this song, everybody wants to go to heaven, but nobody wants to die. Right. Man, I, I did not get that at all. But every time she came, she, she'd backslide and try to start serving the Lord again. She'd come sing that song. <laughs> Couldn't sing for nothing. It's stuck in my head. Yeah. But that, that's the truth of it. I was yeah. thinking about that preparing for this. Everybody wants to go to heaven. Yeah, that's right. Everybody wants to be the big shot. Everybody wants to do this and do that, but nobody wants to die out. Come on, preach. And nobody wants to come the hard way. Preach, come on. And that's what it takes to have a, a real yes, genuine sir. experience. You've got to die out. Amen. I, I don't care if you do it here or in your preach. seat. I don't care where you do it. If you do it in your car, if you do it at home, you've got to do it somewhere. You've got to come by faith. Not an intellectual faith, but you've got to catch a vision, amen, of the word and who Jesus was. Amen. It's so simple. It's not hard. Amen. We try to make it so mysterious. Amen. Catch a vision of, of Jesus dying on the cross. Him giving his life for you. Amen. Go there. Amen. It'll, it'll take all the world out of you. Amen. Amen. You'll lay down your rights. Amen. It's no more about you. But, but Jesus, come live in me. If you want the Holy Ghost, that's what you got to do. That's where you got to come to. Amen. We've got too many of us. Too many of us that never died out. Amen. All they want to do is fight and fuss and do this and do that. Amen. That ain't what it's about. It's about the love of Jesus Christ shed abroad in our hearts by the Holy Ghost. Your problems will catch up with you later down the road. You don't do that. Amen. I try to keep preaching here. Hebrews 10.1. Always love preaching this. The law having a shadow of good things to come, and not the very image of the things, can never be with those sacrifices which they offered year by year continually to make the comers thereunto perfect. For then would they not have ceased to be offered, because that the worshipers once purged should have no more conscience of sins. Hebrews 10, 10 and 1, 10 and 3 now. But in those sacrifices there's, there is a remembrance again made of sins every year. For it is not possible that the blood of bulls and goats should take away sin. So the Old, Old Testament, Brother Ben talked about it. Amen. Jesus fulfilled all the Old Testament. He was all what the prophets and all what the law said. Amen. And under those ordinances, amen, they had to bring a lamb to cover their sins. Right? They had to bring it year after year. Right? But they would go away, amen, because that the life of that could only cover, it could not purge, it could not take away, amen, the sin oh that was in their heart, yeah. amen. And so they would come year after year and they would bring these, this sacrifice. They would bring this lamb to the priest, right? And they would bring that, and that's what God required because it was the image, it was a shadow of what was to come. Yeah. Amen. But they would leave. Amen. Amen. Doing what God told them to do. But they would leave with that same desire that they come with. Though they were covered. But we're no longer living under shadows. We've got the real thing here tonight. Amen. We're no longer living under something mysterious. 
Amen. But Revelation 10, 7, in the days of the voice of the seventh angel, amen, the mystery of God should be finished. Amen. We're living, amen, we're living in a time of clarity in Revelation, amen, amen, where we've got the real thing. Amen. We've got the real of the real, amen, that we can present to the people, amen, that we can experience. Amen. Amen. We're no longer living under a shadow or something mysterious. Amen. And we try to make it that. We try to, amen, make the Holy Ghost something. Amen. That you got to do this and you got to do that and you got to do this. Amen. You just got to come to Jesus. Amen. You've got to come. Amen. And identify yourself with the Lamb of God that was slain. Amen. And when you come and amen, you identify and you come and you've got a vision and you lay your hands on that sacrifice. Amen. There the life of the Holy Ghost that was in the blood. It is transferred back upon the believer, amen, and there, amen, you're not going to leave with that desire, amen, but you're going to be changed, amen. There's going to be something, a, a Holy Ghost change in the inside. You'll leave different if you ever come and identify yourselves with Jesus Christ and what he done, amen. Amen, he wants, he wants to give you that life here tonight. Amen. I'll try to hurry here. But as we as ministers, amen, we must bring the word in the same spirit and the light that it was brought. Yes. And that will bring the people to Jesus Christ. That will bring them to the power of the Holy Ghost. Amen. Not what we think it is, but what the word says. And I appreciate a minister, amen, that will preach the, the message in the same spirit that Brother Branham preached it in. I appreciate that. I appreciate Brother Ben, Brother Joel. Amen. I, Brother Tim Pru listened to him for years, and I always, it was always the same spirit. It wasn't a twist. Amen. But it, it was brought in the same spirit. Amen. Preached in the same spirit. Amen. And it'll bring, a, amen, the, the same spirit of that word, amen, will bring a, a living reality. Amen. Not just a law and a shadow or something mysterious. Amen. But it'll bring a reality to the people of God. Amen. Amen. To where we can minister an entrance and bring you, amen, to the way, the truth, and the life, the door, Jesus Christ. Amen. To where you can come in, amen, and, and have fellowship with him because that's really what he wants. That's the kind of experience that he wants to give you. I don't mean to be screaming in your faces here tonight. Amen. But it's about a change. A change has got to take place. Amen. That's the experience that we want. I remember as a, as a young man, one of the first experiences that I had with God, it was a great emotional experience. It was at church camp. And that experience did not hold me, but it was something that I knew God moved in my life. And I left there trying to serve God. My heart was tender, amen, but there was nothing there to hold me. But it was a, such a great emotional experience. And I remember years later when I, would, when I would eventually get saved and filled with the Holy Ghost, that the emotion of that never matched from that years ago. But that's not what God's trying to give you. It's just a, a feeling or an ism or an emotion. Though that comes with it. Amen, but he's wanting to give you something that will last. Something that'll hold you, something that'll anchor you, something that'll bring you through the hard times. Because I'll tell you, Amen. When you when you get old enough to get married and you get old enough, old enough to have kids, Amen. That's, that brother Brown said that's when the trials of life come. Right. Uh, right. Amen. Be, be be cautious about getting married. Enjoy being a kid. Yeah. Enjoy your youth. Don't don't rush into nothing. Amen. Get a real genuine experience with God. And when you get married, Amen. Amen. You won't have all those troubles and those ups and downs. Amen. Amen. You, you can upset one another, and amen. You'll eventually say, "Sorry, where's she at? She's gone, ain't she?" You got to, right? Amen. We're trying to avoid problems. Amen. Amen. Get anchored in Christ. Amen. And we'll we'll bypass a lot of the troubles that we bring on ourselves. Amen not trying to beat nobody over the head or talk about nobody truth. just the, the truth of it yeah that's right so that sacrifice couldn't take away the desire amen but wow. the life that's in jesus christ can take away the desire of sin oh, yeah. make you a new creature make you born again and that's what it takes it's not just the word but it's the spirit also thank you lord amen it's the life that was in the blood amen 
talking about the new nature. He said, God is known by simple faith, by the baptism of the Holy Ghost. That's the only way. God in you till he brings you as son of God changes your nature. And the very same thing, God who, who created and made all the things and spoke the world into existence by, by his word, that same spirit is in you. And you believe everything that God says and there's nothing impossible because you believe it. Amen. The Holy Ghost in you, it gives you something. It gives you a faith. Yeah. Come on. It gives you a faith. It gives you a reality. Not a hope so, but you got to know so. Yeah. Come on. And I'm not saying you're not going to have problems and you're not going to have mistakes. But amen, if you get that know so, uh, it's something that you can go back to. Amen. Right. Amen. Amen. Jesus talks about the house that they got cleaned up and swept and the demons were cast out, but there wasn't, amen, a, the man of the house wasn't there and the demons came back in, right? And so the man of the house is the Holy Ghost, that faith of the Holy Ghost in you, and it will keep the devil out and God sealed in. Thank you, Lord. Amen, don't just get cleaned up. Don't just get a feel good and try for a little bit. Let's go on in and, and get the Holy Ghost, amen. Yes, sir. Amen. Yes, sir. Try to skip some of this. God, looking through the blood, he says he doesn't see you no more as a sinner. He sees you redeemed. And that's what we're trying to get you to. We're trying to get you to a blood. We're trying to get you to a life. Amen. 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 Where God looks through you as perfect. He sees you redeemed. You're redeemed because he always sees you through Christ. And he said that's the reason we can be perfect, not perfect. It's sinless, but we're perfect in the eyes of God when we're in Christ. Oh, Amen. You. Acts 2 1. The day of Pentecost was fully come. They were all in one accord in one place, and suddenly there came a sound from heaven as of a rushing mighty wind, and it filled all the house oh, where they were sitting. And there appeared unto them cloven tongues like as a fire, and it sat upon each of them, and they were filled with the Holy Ghost. And began to speak with other tongues as the Spirit gave them utterance. And Brother Brown says here, he said, well, what did they do? They waited. Yeah. And they waited. And they wasn't satisfied, but they waited until there came a sound from a rushing mighty wind. Amen. That's what you've got to do. You've got to wait on the Lord, and he will come. Amen. God will fulfill his word. Amen. The Holy Ghost promise. Amen. It, it's, it's just as real as it ever was. Amen. Amen. And they knew. Amen. Jesus. Amen. Amen. And Brother Andrew brought this out. He, he breathed on them. Amen. Receive ye the Holy Ghost. And they went to the upper room. Amen. With that promise. And they went to the upper room with the promise of Joel that I'll pour out my spirit upon all flesh. And when they went there and worshiped in one accord in one place and they waited. Amen. And they waited. And they waited. Amen. Don't rush off. Amen. Let's get an experience that matches the word. Let's get something that'll hold us, that'll change us. Amen. Amen, something we can identify back to the word, amen, because that's what's going to hold you, amen, not, a, not an emotion, amen, but an experience with the word. Yes, sir. Amen. You say, well, it didn't happen just exactly like it did on the day of Pentecost. No, because God had a specific experience for them at that specific time. Amen. But it's, it's got to bring the same effect. Amen. We're all going to have different experiences like we said, but it's got to bring the same effect. Amen. Amen. We won't be living, amen, one way and this one living another. Amen. But we'll be right down the middle of the road. Amen. Amen. Led. Amen. The Bible says that the sons of God are led by the Spirit of God, and that's what the Holy Ghost, amen, will do for you. It's a leader. Amen. It will lead you and guide you. Amen. Amen. They, oh, thank you, Lord. And when they, when they left that upper room, they were different. It took all the coward out of them. Yeah. It took all of being ashamed out of them. Amen. And they left there and they staggered. The Bible says they staggered like drunk men. And when they were under the influence of someone else, they were under the influence of, uh, of not sin and not the devil. Amen. But they were under the influence of the Holy Ghost. And the Bible says they staggered like drunk men out of there. Amen. The world's going to try to offer you all kinds of things, all kinds of things to alter your mind. Amen. Destroy your life. Amen. Amen. There's, but there's a true inoculation. Amen. There, there, there's a true, amen, stimulation. Amen. That God wants to give you. Amen. There's a drunk, amen, where, where you can be influenced under the influence, no longer under 
under the influence of the world, amen, but under the influence of the Spirit of God. And the Spirit of God is here, amen, to not to bring you to hell, amen, but to bring you in a rapture in this hour. There's young people, amen. There's going to be six, seven, eight, nine year olds, amen, that's going to go into rapture, amen. They're not going to get left behind here, amen, but they're predestinated, amen, amen, for this generation, amen, to overcome, amen. God's going to have them in all shapes and sizes, ages, amen. God's going to have a group of people. I'm going to skip on. I'm going to go on, man. Come on. Amen. Brother Ben read this this morning, Acts 2.38. Repent, be baptized in the name of Jesus Christ, every one of you, for remission of your sins. You shall receive the gift of the Holy Ghost. For the promise is unto you and your children, to them that are far off, even as many as the Lord our God shall call. And with many other words did he testify and exhort, saying, Save yourselves from this untoward generation. So that generation there, I mean, that word untoward, it was crooked. They were perverse. They were wicked. They crucified Jesus Christ. Amen. They rejected the word. They were perverse. But Peter's here telling them, Save yourselves from this generation. Amen. And I believe in this hour. I wish there was more young people here. Yeah, come on. But we're here tonight. Come on. God knew who would be here. Yeah. There's a generation that God has set aside. He's preserved a people in this hour. Yeah. He's preserved a generation that will take the word on. Yeah. Amen. Amen. You believe that. Yeah. Oh, come on. Amen. To receive the Holy Ghost. There's a, amen, a generation that will seek the living God. Right. Psalms 24 and 3. Who shall ascend in the hill of the Lord? Who, who shall stand in his holy place? He that hath clean hands and a pure heart, who hath not lifted up his soul unto vanity, nor sworn deceitfully. He shall receive the blessing of the Lord. He shall receive the blessing of the Lord and, and righteousness from the God of his salvation. What an experience. And he said, this is the generation of them that seek him, that seek thy face, O Jacob. Amen, amen. Who shall ascend? Come There's on. going to be a generation that will ascend into the hill of the Lord. And that word ascend means to go up, yeah. go over, rise of a natural phenomenon. How do they serve God in such a wicked and perverse age? Amen. There's a supernatural God. Amen. He's got a generation that's going to ascend. Amen. Into the hill of the Lord. Amen. They'll have clean hands. They'll have a pure heart. Amen. And they're going to receive the blessing of the Holy Ghost. Amen. Amen. They're going to walk in the righteousness. Amen. Of Jesus Christ. Amen. They've got someone in them. Amen. They've got something in them. They've got a desire to see the word fulfilled. Amen. They've got a desire, amen, to honor the word. Yes. Amen. They got it's a generation that was going to come up before God. They're going to go up, go over. Amen. They're, we set boundaries. We set parameters. The world says you can only do this. Amen. Denominations say you can only do this. Amen. And we set boundaries. Amen. But there's a generation. Amen. That's going to take the word, as Brother Ben said. Amen. And that's this generation. Amen. That's this generation. They're going to go above the boundary of what man says they can and they can't do. Amen. Amen. They're going to prove. Amen. That there's a genuine Holy Ghost. Amen. They're going to prove. Amen. That the days of miracle are not past. They're going to take the word of what a prophet said in this hour. Amen. They're going to put it on their lips and they're going to prophesy yes. oh, thank you, Lord. Yes. Yeah. amen Water. John was told to eat the book take the book and prophesy yeah. again Take the message, amen, and prophesy again, amen. Don't leave it with the prophet. Don't leave it with just Jesus, amen. Amen, there's a generation that's going to take the word. Amen. Generation, that word means habitation, a dwelling, amen, a period or an age. A generation, those that li are living during a period, Amen. Who's, al who's alive here tonight? Who's alive? Amen. We're living in this, this, this final generation. I believe. Amen. We're going to go up. We're going to go beyond. We're going to go out of the boundaries. Amen. Amen. Brother Brown said every generation has its chance at the word, has its chance at revival. And your generation, young people, is no different. Amen. You can think of your favorite Bible study. 
But Luke said, David, who did you say? Samuel. Samson. Samson. Sorry, can't hear. They all had their experience. They all, all had their chance at the word. Yeah. Right? Yeah. And you're no different. You're no different than them. God will give you an experience. God will prove things through your life if you'll surrender to him. And that's where, that's where, it, that's where it's at. It takes a surrender. It takes a consecration to him. Amen. Amen. I think of Enoch. That's one of my favorite Bible characters. Enoch, that, that word means, his name means consecrated. It means dedicated. Amen. He took a rapture. He walked with God for 365 years. Amen. And he, and he went on up with God as though he was not. Amen, that's the kind of life we want to live, amen, consecrated, dedicated to him. Amen, there's going to be a generation that takes a rapture. There's going to be a generation that will let the word have preeminence. They will let the Holy Ghost have its way in their life. They will become that generation, that habitation of the Holy Ghost. Amen. This is something after I, I was saved in 2005. God changed my life. And I went to winter youth retreat, went to a camp. It's like some of y'all are going, amen, and the, the word being preached. And there's things that will illuminate you and give you faith, amen. Don't go there just, amen, to, just to have a good time or to see your buddy or whoever, amen, go to, to benefit from it. Yes, that's good. And that, that's what I went to youth retreat in 2005. This quote was read. It said, Luther walked in one light and Wesley walked in another. Wesley walked in one light, Pentecost walked in another. But we're walking on higher than that today. And he said, if, if there's another generation, it'll go beyond us. Amen. If you go back, that was in 1959. If you go back, Brother Brown says, there can't be another generation. Because of how sinful and how wicked things were. How the parents were letting their children just do whatever they were encouraging them to do this. And he, the prophet was saying, there, there, there just can't be another generation. But here we go on, and I think this was left for you and I. Yeah. I, I I've always been encouraged by it. Yeah. He said, if there is another generation, it'll go beyond us. Amen. Right. Amen. We're going to take the word. Amen. We're not going to put it on the shelf. Right. Amen. We're not going to. We're not going to. Try to exalt ourselves above the messenger or what was brought, but we're going to take what was brought, amen, and we're going to go beyond, amen. We're going to we're going to let the word, amen. Luther, amen. He, amen. The people of those day, those days, they manifested what he said, amen. They were saved, they were justified, amen. And the people during the time of Wesley, they lived sanctified lives, they lived a holiness life, amen, amen. But you and I, amen, we're here to to take, amen. The word's got to take on flesh, amen. It's got to become flesh in this generation. So the prophet passed off the scene in, in 1965. Yeah. And so in 2005, that was another generation. That was the year I, God changed my life. Oh, Amen. A, oh, another wow. generation had came, just as he said. Yeah. Amen. And I, I was just thinking today, we're almost 20 years into that generation. Wow. It's almost halfway over. Just think of where we're at. Oh, but I believe we're all part of that generation. Amen. We're living here. Amen. Let's be the habitation. Let's be that generation, amen, that seeks God. Amen. That will ascend into the, into the holy place, into the hill of the Lord. Amen. How much more time I got? I got eight more minutes, don't I? You see, he says, each one of those ages had only taken a dip into the Holy Spirit. Justification is a work of the Holy Spirit. Sanctification but the baptism of the Holy Spirit, he said, that's the reason. This was in 63. He said, that's the reason it took a prophetic prophet to come down. No messenger to the edge because the Holy Ghost came himself oh, yeah. in this fullness of the baptism. Yeah. Amen. Wonderful. Amen. The Holy Ghost himself came in this hour. Mm -hmm. Brother Brunson, my ministry is to declare that he's here. Yes. Yeah. What is the Holy Ghost? Who is the Holy Ghost? Yeah. It's a person. It's a life. Yeah. Amen. It's the fullness of, as Brother Ben said this morning, it's a, the, the fullness of the word is here. Amen. And amen. And as you as as you identify yourself with the sacrifice, we're not identifying ourselves just under Luther's light or Wesley's light. Well, we come and identify ourselves with that atonement. Come on. And that word atonement means to be one with, yep. to make you one. 
And the word of the hour, amen, it's the fullness of the atonement brought back to the bride, amen. It's the fullness of the power brought back to you and I, amen, amen, that we could receive, amen, of that fullness of God in this generation. Amen. We're not, we're not laying our hands on this part of the word, but it's the fullness to bring us to something, to bring us a change inside of us, to bring us to the change of the body. Amen. The word generation, 1 Peter 2, 9, but you're a chosen generation, a royal priesthood, a holy nation, a peculiar people. Be different from the world. Yes. Don't be like the world. Yes. Be different. That you should show forth the praises of him who have called you out of darkness into his marvelous light. Yes. Amen. The world's darkness, denominations darkness, but the word of God came in this hour as a light yeah. to lighten our steps. Amen. We are that generation. Amen. We are that offspring. And that's what the word generation means. It means kindred, an offspring, a nation. Amen. You've been born for a purpose, not just from your mother and your father. That's why you're that's here. Right. That's why we're all here. Yeah. Amen. But there's a birth of the Holy Ghost well, that God you. wants to give you. Yeah. If you hadn't received that, amen, he's here for you tonight. Yeah. Well, he yeah. said he'd be with us, even in us, to the very end. Amen. Can you stand this evening? You love the Lord. Yeah. Oh, thank you, Jesus. Can we sing a song? I know we got communion tonight. <clears throat> I'm not trying to hold anybody. Let's just I want to sing that song and make me more like you. Oh, thank you, Lord. Amen. Is that what you want tonight? Lord, make me more like you. Amen. Oh, make me more like you, Jesus. Make me more like you. Oh, and give me a heart that's filled with love and make me more like Thee. Oh, sing it, make me more like That's filled with love and make me more like thee. Amen. Let's just bow our hearts. Lord Jesus, Lord, we thank you for these young people here tonight. Lord, I pray, Lord, you would move down upon them, Lord, in the coming moments, coming coming days, coming week, Lord. Lord, those preparing to go to camp, Lord. Lord, give our young people a, a genuine experience, we pray, Lord. Give them something that'll change them, God. Lord, we just, we thank you for them, Lord. We see just such a fine group coming up, Lord. Such a great responsibility it is, Lord. Lord, help us as ministers, Lord, to, Lord, to, Lord, to see them through, Lord, to help them, Lord. And we pray that you'd give us wisdom Lord, we pray that you would, Lord, just speak to their hearts. Keep their hearts tender before you, Lord. Lord, fill them with the Holy Ghost. Lord, that's my desire for my children, for, for other children, Lord. Fill them with the Holy Ghost. And those that have been filled with the Holy Ghost, Lord, strengthen their experience. Help them, O oh God. And Lord, that's our desire tonight, Lord. May the Word strengthen them, Lord. May they, Lord, just see you, Lord, high and lifted up, Lord. Lord, may the... The fire of God just so come in their lives, Lord, and touch them, Lord. 
Lord, as it did the prophet Isaiah, Lord, come, Lord, and make them clean, Lord, come and make them be witnesses, Lord, and Lord, send them out, Lord, and let them, Lord, shine the light of Jesus Christ, Lord. That's our desire tonight, Lord, that's what we want, Lord, as your body, as your church, Lord. Lord, we want an Acts 2.38 group, Lord. Lord, that those that know your spirit, Lord, are screaming, shouting. Lord, that, Lord, under the influence of the Holy Ghost, Lord, not under the influence of the Word, Lord. That's what the, the church is to produce, Lord, in this hour, God. May it produce it, Lord. Lord, may we shake ourselves in this hour, realize, Lord, the generation that we are, Lord. Lord, may you just come, Lord, increase our faith, Lord. Lord, bring us up power in the Spirit of God, in the things of God, Lord, like never before, Lord. Lord, we pray in Jesus' name, amen. Oh, and make me more like Thee. Oh, won't you make me more like Thee, Jesus? Could we lift our hands to Him, just make it our prayer tonight? As we go into the communion service, like me, like oh, and give me a heart that's filled with love, oh, and make me more like you. Oh, don't you love him? His presence is so sweet. If you could play just for a minute. And I want you to bow your heads, close your eyes. I, I just want to, I know we're not all here tonight, and there's several that are missing for different reasons. But if you're out there watching tonight and you're sick or traveling, you, you do this as well. If you know you need the baptism of the Holy Ghost, and you know that you need it, I believe it's here for you. And if you know that you need it, I want you to just lift your hand to him and say, Lord, give me the baptism of the Holy Ghost. God bless that hand. Just raise your hand. God bless that hand, that hand there. Young or old, it doesn't matter. I just want to be able to, to pray with you. And, and I believe the Lord will do that for you. And some of our young people going to camp, you need that. Brother Peter, come up this morning for a refilling of the Holy Ghost. How many of you need a refilling of the Holy Ghost? My hands are up today. I need to, I need him in my life. I I don't want to go. Moses said, don't let us go up without your presence, Lord. We, we don't want to go all in our own effort. We want to go with you, Lord Jesus. Now let's just all pray together one more time before we go into communion. And these that raise their hand and a few that they just know they need the baptism of the Holy Ghost. I, I just pray the Lord would pour it out on them right now. and They'd receive it. And, and maybe you're struggling with, well, I, I just... I need something from the Lord. You that are going to camp, you just expect God to do something for you while you're there. Don't, don't just make it. It's a fun time. It will be. But let, let God do something in your life. Let him work for you. I appreciated that so much from Brother Stewart, a seasoned minister. And that's what I wanted him to do, to preach to you, to stir your heart about the baptism of the Holy Ghost. Let's just all pray together. Heavenly Father, oh, we need a refilling of the Holy Spirit tonight. All of us need that, oh God. Lord, in this place where we're standing, Lord, we can't do anything right, oh God, without your spirit being in it. And we pray for a refilling right now from the pulpit to the pew, oh God. May you pour your spirit out on this place, Lord. May it be real to us, God. May it not be just a dead letter or a word only, but may it be the reality of your presence, Lord, the mechanics and the dynamics together making a living bride. I pray you grant it, Lord. For these that have never received the baptism of the Holy Ghost, I pray you'd work in their life, Lord. Let them get desperate for it, oh God. May you, may they recognize how much they need it. They can't live without it, Lord. I can't live without it. We must have you, oh God. I pray you grant it tonight. Lord, we need the real Holy Ghost in our life. Lord, may we not blame others, Lord, but may we look to you, oh God, and say, you can take care of my problems. I'm not going to blame myself. I'm not going to blame others. I'm going to live for Jesus, and I'm going to receive the baptism of the Holy Ghost. I pray you grant it tonight. Lord, fill us right now as we come to this communion service may you just be real in the communion lord i know that it's not the the, the broken uh, bread just represents your body and the wine just represents 
your blood. But Lord, Lord, we want it to be a reality to us that you did die for us. We place our hands on the sacrifice today and we identify with it. We believe you died for our sins. You rose again on the third day. Lord, and you live within us today. We're so thankful for that. Pour your spirit out on us, not only today, but every day through the week we pray. In Jesus' name, amen. Hallelujah. Amen. If the brothers would come and I want to read from 1 Corinthians chapter 11. Oh, don't you love him? Just a wonderful spirit here tonight. 1 Corinthians 11. He says, For I have received of the Lord that which also I delivered unto you. That the Lord Jesus, the same night in which he was betrayed, took bread. And when he had given thanks, he broke it and said, Take, eat, this is my body, which is broken for you. This do in remembrance of me. Well, I don't want to forget you, Lord. I don't want to forget what you did for me. I don't want it to become passionless or old or yesterday's news. I want it to be real. For as often as you eat this bread and drink this cup, you do show the Lord's death till he come. Amen. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Lord Jesus, I have in my hands the bread, Lord, which is a type of your broken body. It was broken, Lord, so we could be whole. Lord, for our healing, oh God, you were broken. Lord, we're so thankful for that. Lord, you cried, my God, my God, why hast thou forsaken me? Lord, so we would never have to cry that. Lord, we're so thankful for that today. I thank you for it, Lord, and I pray you would bless it. In Jesus' name. Lord Jesus, for the wine, I pray, God, that you would just, Lord, help us to recognize the efficient, the effectiveness of the blood in our lives. Lord, as, as these elements pass through our bodies, may there be healing, Lord, physical, mental, Lord, Whatever needs to happen, oh God, we know that you're a healer. We know that you are our almighty God. We ask you to come and just be a part of our service today. Lord, we thank you for being here. And, and Lord, we thank you, Lord, for your blood. And we remember you, Lord, in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. God bless you as you come. It's Jesus I really want to see. Oh, it's Jesus that I really. Oh 
Those precious bloodstains, 
those precious blood stains. Oh, and something keeps holding me every day I see. He's helping me faithfully to overcome my trial. Oh, hallelujah. Oh, he's guiding me constantly. Something keeps holding me. I know that something keeps holding me. Every day I see He's helping me faithfully to overcome my trials. Something keeps holding me. Sing it one more time. Something keeps holding me. I know that something keeps holding me. Every day I see He's helping me faithfully to overcome my trials. scripture for foot washing you know Jesus said that you know people would know that we were disciples by our love for one another and I wanted to read this it come on my heart this is what Paul says love is he said though I speak with the tongues of men and of angels and have not charity and become a sounding brass or a tinkling cymbal I have the gift of prophecy and understand all mysteries and all knowledge I have all faith so that I could remove mountains and have not charity. I'm nothing. Charity is agape love. Though I bestow, bestow all my goods to feed the poor, though I give my body to be burned, I have not charity. It profiteth me nothing. Charity suffereth long and is kind. Charity envieth not. Charity vaunteth not itself. It's not puffed up. It does not behave itself unseemly. It seeketh not her own. It's not easily provoked thinketh no evil, rejoiceth not in iniquity, but rejoiceth in the truth, beareth all things, believeth all things, hopeth all things, endureth all things. Charity never fails. Whether there be prophecies, they shall fail. Whether there be tongues, they shall cease. Whether there be knowledge, it shall vanish away. For we know in part and we prophesy in part, but when that which is perfect is come, then that which is, is in part shall be done away. And then the last verse he said, And now abideth faith, hope, charity, these three. But the greatest of these is charity. We wash one another's feet because of the love that's been shed abroad in our hearts by the Holy Ghost. And Jesus, when he did that, set an example. He said, You do what I've done to you. He said, And if you do these things, happy are ye if you do them. Amen. Amen. If you love one another, Amen. That's, that's how men will know that you're a Christian if you love one another. Amen. Let's bow our heads one more time. And when we're done with the foot washing service, we'll come right back in and just have a few minutes of worship and, and, and praise and we'll water the word with our praise. I know it's been a, a lengthy service, but I believe it's been good. Uh, it's been good. I'm just overwhelmed right now by the love of God in my heart. And I say, oh, God, I just want the whole world to feel what I feel in my heart right now. I don't know how to explain it, 
Lord, we, we want to remember what you did for us. Don't want it to ever get old. We want to love one another with all of our hearts. Amen. Heavenly Father, oh, I just love you tonight. I thank you for your presence. I realize, realize how weak and how ineffective I can be in the flesh. Lord, I realize how strong you are. And I thank you for these things our brother said tonight, Lord. And Lord, it makes me realize that you there must be something holding me, something, Lord, that's kept me all these years, and I thank you for that. Lord, would won't you keep a hold of me? I can't hold on to you. I want you to hold me, Lord. Help me, oh God. May your presence be with us, Lord, even as we wash feet. May we not leave your presence. May the same spirit just continue on even as we go home. And, Lord, may we recognize what you did for us. I thank you for these young people today, Lord. I pray you would bless them, encourage them, oh God. Help them, Lord. Lord, to just really receive all that they can receive from you. I pray you grant it today. We thank you. We love you. In Jesus' name. Bless the foot washing service and all the rest of the things that are said and done. In Jesus' name. Amen. I bless you, the men back here as the brothers direct you and the ladies as usual. I believe in the back. God bless you. Holding me. Oh, yes, Lord. Oh, something keeps holding me. Oh, every day I see. Oh, he's helping me faithfully. Oh. 
chosen generation one more time oh yes we are oh, we are the generation we're the culmination the final voice the world will hear the coming of our lord is near living out the revelation overcoming sin's temptation the truth will go to every tongue and nation we are the chosen generation and down at the cross where my savior died down there for cleansing from sin i cried there to my heart was the blood applied Singing glory to his name. Oh, we're singing glory to his name. Glory to his name. There to my heart was the blood applied. Singing glory to his name. so wondrously saved from sin and Jesus so sweetly abides within there at the cross where he took me in and glory to his name we're singing glory to his name his precious name oh glory to was the blood applied singing glory to his name and oh precious fountain that saves from sin well i am so glad i have entered in and there jesus saves me and keeps me clean singing glory to his name oh we're singing glory to his name precious name oh glory to his wonderful name there to my heart was the blood of life singing glory to his name oh come to this fountain so rich and sweet cast thy poor soul at the savior's feet won't you plunge in today and be made complete singing glory to his name we're singing glory to his name precious name oh glory to his name Singing glory to, sing that last verse again. Oh, won't you come to this fountain so rich and sweet? Just cast thy poor soul at the Savior's feet. Oh, plunge in today and be made complete. Singing glory to, oh, with all your hearts now, we're singing glory. His name, His precious name, oh glory to His name. Oh, there to my heart was the blood of life, singing glory to His name. Oh, victory in Jesus, my Savior forever. He sought me and he bought me with his redeeming blood. He loved me ere I knew him, and all my love is due him. He plunged me to victory beneath the cleansing flood. We're singing, oh, victory in Jesus. 
victory beneath that cleansing flood. Oh, yes, I heard an old, old story how a Savior came from glory, how he gave his life on Calvary to save a wretch like me. And I heard about his growing of his precious blood's atoning. Then I repented of my sins and won the victory. Sing it, oh, victory in Jesus, my Savior forever. He sought me and he bought me with his to the water and I've been baptized I've been washed by the blood of the Lamb well I've been changed from this creature that I once was and redeemed is now my name well I've been changed and I've been reborn now all my life has been It makes when the Lord has His way. All my life, praise God, has been changed. Although my sins were as scarlet, they're white as snow. I was bound, but today I am free. Oh, I was lost in the darkness, but now I'm found. I was blind, but now I see. Well, I've been changed. Well, I've been reborn now. All my life has been. Oh, first, anybody been changed? Can you stand and sing it now? Oh, when the Lord has His way. All my life, praise God. Oh, this last verse here. Oh, when at last in His presence I stand above, He will wipe. All the tears from my eyes Open up they in forgiving a wretch like me A new home beyond the sky Are you looking forward to that day? Oh, I've been changed And I've been reborn now All my life has been rearranged Oh, what a difference it made One more time, I've been changed and I've been reborn now. All my life has been rearranged. Oh, what a difference it makes when the Lord has His way. All my life, oh, I'm in this church, this glorious church. Well, I didn't join, no, I was born, I had a new birth, some glorious day, we're gonna sail away, it's by His grace, not by my works, I'm in this church, when Jesus came, He was left out, there was no place where He was welcome here on earth, but He had a plan, for a house that shall forever stand He spoke these words upon this rock I'll build my church Oh, I'm in this church It's a glorious church Well, I didn't join No, I was born I had a new birth Some glorious day I'm gonna sail away It's by His grace Not by my works I'm in this church Amen. Are you in that church tonight? Not this building, but amen. Are you in the church of God? Amen. Amen. Did you enjoy that message from Brother Stewart tonight? Amen. It was wonderful. Good. We'll do the young people some good right there. Amen.
be praying for these young people as they go to camp. Amen. I believe they can come back on fire for the Lord and, and filled with the Holy Ghost. Amen. We just need to believe for it. Amen. Amen. I'm going through. Can we do that one? Just We can sing this one and you can stay and worship or you can go, whatever you need to do. Well, I'm going through. Yes, I'm going through. I'll pay the price, whatever others do. Well, I'll take the way with the Lord's despised few. I've started in Jesus, and I'm going through. Lord, I have started to walk in the light, shining upon me from heaven so bright. Well, I made the world and its follies to do. I've started in Jesus and I'm going through. We're singing, I'm going. Why don't you turn around and shake somebody's hand before you go? I'll pay the price, whatever others do. Well, I'll take the way with the Lord's despised few. Well, I've started in Jesus. And I'm going through. Well, oh, there are many who start in the race. But with the light, refuse to keep pace. And others accept it because it is new. But not very many expect to go through. We're singing, I'm going through. Yes, I'm going through. I'll pay the price, whatever others do. Oh, I'll take the way with the Lord's despised few. I've started in Jesus, and I'm going through. I'd rather walk with Jesus alone and have for a pillow like Jacob a stone. Living each moment with his face in the That straight from my pathway and failed to go through. We're singing, I'm going through. Singing, I'm going through. Well, I'll pay the price, whatever others do. Oh, I'll take the way with the Lord's despised few. I've started in Jesus. And I'm going through. 